Hi, thank you for having us on the show. Love the show. Um, I'm My Guy Monkey from My Guy Reviews. I'm My Guy Brig. Uh, we have our own podcast. We talk about pop culture related topics. Each week we bring a new topic to the table. A bit like your own. So if you're looking for more content like this when you're done, head over to My Guy Reviews. We talk about movies, video games, fan- fighting fantasy books, TV shows. And as much as My Guy Monkey hates it, we talk music as well. Type in the word My Guy Reviews. At Spotify, YouTube and your podcast service of choice. Action. The gala was in full swing. Got the players on stage and centre of the entire production. Not only for their music, but the act of playing itself was something to behold. We moved in perfect harmony, each and every motion, no matter how small, matched flawlessly across the entire stage. Fingers brushed across strings with a smooth surety that could never have been found in nature. The paraninous hands flew over the keys with absolute efficiency. Of course... There was murmurings among the crowd. Those who felt the motions were unnatural. Those who felt it lacked the human element. Of course it did. It was a simple fact. The humans were flawed. Why else would they build machines to act in their place? If not because machines were better suited to the task. Why reject the unnatural as though natural? Though nature were the final authority on how things ought to be done. Was it a rejection of improvement upon the nature, the entire course of human progress? If one were eager to embrace nature over indignity, perhaps one should abandon medicine, clothing and shelter, avoid all other conveniences of the modern world, take up life in a cave somewhere deep in a forest. Arguments about the superiority of nature would not stand so strong against the winter in the elements or sleep disturbed by all too near howling wolves. Mary blinked and steered her thoughts away from the morbid turn they had taken and turned her focus back to the performance. It's hardly unusual for her to become lost in thought since her accident. Her mind rarely took such dark paths. Instead, her daydreams would typically focus upon more immediate concerns, such as how she might occupy herself for the day, or what great work her dear husband was currently perfecting. Perfection in all things was her husband's eternal drive, and these were merely his most recent attempt at achieving it. The entire band was composed of mortal mania, something that had long been considered impossible, but no machine could properly imitate the smooth, controlled motions of human talent. Your mobility had always been a rough, jerky, haphazard affair. It was a brave man who allowed an automation to serve tea, or at least one forgiving of stains. Giving an instrument, it, giving an instrument was it, merely an exercise of recreating confused catastrophe that a small child would produce. Give the same opportunity. This new design, though, is not sh- enough for what that had moved as humans could. They would have never satisfied her husband. He had confessed to her he had mastered that complete challenge months before. But no, he strove further. His work not complete until his creation combined a precision of machine, grace of flesh, to the final product, final product greater than either of its, own, its parts. Not only were their motions stunning, but their appearance as well, the polished metal of the limbs, highlighted by the faint glow and luminous replays beneath, carrying energy from the Xerocon core to brilliant complex mechanisms which drove their motion. The new cores, designed to last a lifetime in typical applications, were one of the mo- few aspects of Automania. They were not her husband's design. Orthographic energy was one of the handful of fields he conducted no work in, and that her husband considered this new model 
from his friend Mr. Lozares, satisfactory for his work, spoke volumes of his capability. Even with a limited understanding of technology, Mary was aware that Lozares' design approved upon an older, mostly model, by an older magnitude. It's not only the glistening of metal or the shine of the photic energy that drew our eyes most of all. What she had been focused upon was the near entirety of a little daydream of being in the hands of the pianist's automation. She had been a keen student instrument herself, only through though as she had been not able to play since her accident. He watched her brass and steel fingers dance across the key for some few minutes longer, then closed her eyes, placed her hands upon an imaginary keyboard, pitching in her mind the feel of the ivory. She found a place and began to play. Or oh, she attempted to play. However, she pictured the keys in her mind, however. Well, she recalled old scores, however, certain she was well, or well of where the fingers ought to, of neck, land her limbs simply refused to cooperate the motion she felt made she made felt awkward restrained somehow as though she did not quite have the control of her body that she was accustomed to she had a scowl mar her face she redoubled her efforts at focusing upon imaginary performance but the more, but the more she tried to force her body's cooperation the more awkward and abstracted her emotions became furthering her frustrations even ever more. So these strong hands grasped her own, holding them in place. Her eyes flew open to meet the grossly grey. Her husband's in the corner of her vision could see several grass watching her, expressions ranging from interest to concern, to blend of scorn and embarrassment, usually reserved for the mentally ill, when they failed to, to, to compose themselves in public. Darling, you're drawing stares, he said, her husband said quietly. To her, Are you all right? Why? She had been merely been. She shook her head. Her thoughts were growing muddled. A frequent result of overstressing herself. She hadn't wasn't, hadn't been playing, had she? No, she had been tempting attending the party. The automation was the one playing. I am fine, dear. She said, pulling back slightly from his hands, so he didn't relax his grip. I was merely recalling playing on my own piano. He nodded. I thought as much. I told you before, you have not, you have yet to fully recover from your accident. You're no shape to be playing now. Mary's eyes drifted back towards the artificial play on the stage, along with her bandmates, kept up the music, unconcerned with the scene playing out before them. I was good then. How could I lose it all of it? You are perfect. He took one of her hands on his lips and kissed it, and released her hand, other hand to put his own on her back. We will have you perfect again soon enough, but you mustn't concern yourself with your piano. Attempting it could strain your body, as stress could stress strain the mind. And now it's best you have a rest. You worked yourself up. I find no, dear. She objected, though she couldn't muster will for more than token resistance. Her husband began guiding her towards the door. I should stay and watch the magicians a bit longer. He shook his head. No, that's what set you into this spell to begin with. Come along, you need to lie down and have a rest. She gave in, allowed her husband to walk over to the floor, the eyes of several particulars, following them as they left. Though only one said anything as they passed. Is something the matter, Bozabet? asked the man, who she had not recognised. Though something ma- made her feel she must, should have. Just a bit of com- overstimulation, Lodris, despite an ongoing weakness. Dr. Bozabet gave a resigned chuckle. You know how they, they can be. One of the many feels you experience always mine, but take care of her. We're taught when you back. Her husband pulled her away out of the ballroom into a small lounge just down the hall. Near enough where she could hear the fists of entities, but far enough she couldn't be part of them. Here you are, darling, he said, laying her down at Chasse Lounge under the window, which she could see the moon above. She didn't resist, in fact, she felt exhausted. Hadn't she been so excited for the party just a few minutes ago? Why was she so tired? 
Rest now, her husband said. You're nearly back to the perfect condition. But until that day comes, we must be wary of those little hiccups. You understand? She is merely able to nod. Good, he said, and smoothed her hair while standing. I'll come back to tend to you. But for now, I will still, will still play the host. Be safe here. He turned and left the room, closing and locking the door behind him. It was indicative of just how near this room was to the party. She could hear the conversation. Pick up back in the ballroom. The things you burden yourself with, Bonaparte. I will never understand. We all have our fixations, though, don't we? By the way, the amount of light released on your variation core and relays must terribly hamper the efficiency. It does, but the work is so brilliant, some excess should be permitted in making a spectacle of it. You have already proved my point. Though, more importantly, I must may find calls to modify the design I appreciate your input. I find myself needing some smoother output modification, restricting energy flow. She lost the flow of the conversation. It's ever increasing technology. As soon was a, was unconscious of ev- of everything at all. Of anything at all. Mary found herself idly wandering at the halls of the manor. She did her best not to become upset. That was the, was bad for her condition, as she forced departure from the fa- party too. No, three days prior had so aptly demonstrated. She paused here, there, tapping her finger against the frame of baiting. She composed herself. Her husband had been right to remove her. She had been growing over sighted and light-headed. She might have collapsed, had a fit, had he not done it. Knowing that, though, did nothing to dull the string, being taken, sting for being taken from the music and from watching pianos. However artificial, display the same mastery of the instrument she once had. It worsened by being unable to pl- her, play her own. She spent uncomfortable hours whiling away the time in those halls. She recovered a process that now seemed interminable. In that time, she was certain she read and read again every book, examined in detail every piece of art, bought every crevice of the home. She had grown bored with it all ages ago, but she still managed to find some way to another distract herself enough from her situation. However, in the wake of the incident at the party, ability to recall how to play the piano, she knew only one thing that would satisfy her. That was to play on her own instrument once again. She had gone to the drawing room, where her prize piano had stood for so long opposite the ancient stone fireplace, and found a simple desk now occupied the space once belonged to the instrument. She eventually considered one of the few serving girls who had irritated her husband had been she eventually cornered one of the few serving girls who hadn't been irritated by her husband had been dismissed in favour of an alteration yet. Girl, what have you done with the piano? She asked the servant. Pretty young thing. Who had been in with them for some time, but whose name entirely slipped Mary's mind. Piano, madam? The girl paused and stared at her. A look of confusion, which also held a bit of what she'd seen in the party's guests witness the episode. Yes, the piano, my piano. He was not. He was not here. Not a long ago. Has it been moved? The girl confusion visibly deepened. She shook her head. Madam, this room has been the same since I started here. It had never been a piano. Mary took a breath and swallowed her irritation. The serving girl, though having a fit within her home, it was only the house staff to witnesses. We lost less embarrassing and overcome her party. She would still prefer to avoid any such loss of composure possible. She dismissed the serving girl and set out to solve the mystery on her own, re-examining all those corners and hidden places around the labyrinth home where the instrument may have been taken, but if not in the entrance hall, nor the bedrooms, nor the dining rooms, nor the library, nor gallery, nor library, nor even a she could have found herself stalking back halls in a foul mood, puzzling over what may have become of it. He wouldn't have had it destroyed or thrown it out for her sake. He'd chosen it for her 
himself. Very fond of his appearance. She didn't believe for a moment he would have marred that perf- perfect finish. Unless that left one room, the one place she never explored, in all of her idle wanderings, her husband's laboratory. She was not allowed in there. No one was beyond Dr. Barometz himself. She understood why, of course. She is purely a scientist, nor even particularly clever. It's likely that her mere presence would upset some delicate work, sitting back months in his latest project. He had already given up much of his work and his care for her, as she would not unusually trouble him further. But in this matter, she could not deny herself. Now her purpose, destination and mind, she haste to walk with the laboratory, and upon seeing the empty hall, immediately attempted the handle, only to find it locked tight. Of course he wouldn't trust the servants to keep out, and so great was his love of work, it would probably not change, even after he placed all their human help with the, his automania. As a lady of the house, she knew where the spare key was, only she had access to it. However, her husband had warned her to only use it in the direct, direct circumstances. It was not due to lack of trust in her, of course, but instead of mere concern of her safety, perhaps fixation upon his work. Its centricity she had long accepted, and even come to love him for. Though this may not be the kind of emergency her husband had envisioned, when he trusted her with the key, perhaps he would see as it a betrayal of his trust. She would think of no other recourse. He studied at all for a time. He had taken her many, for many things, a name of well-being, her freedom, her interaction for society and music. Perhaps he had been pretty childish, but, he, but to her playing her music was a way to stake a claim in her soul. She may be diminished, she may never totally snuffed out. If she could play once more, it would be proof that she needed she was overcome her accident, a frailty once and for all, if only to herself. Yes, the only logical place he would have hidden it, and she would get it back. Mary slipped the key into its hiding place. Carefully made her way back for the library. No cause for such caution, as she was alone in the house for the first time since the idea come to her a few weeks ago. It made her nervous to hear her labours produce even the tiniest noise. As she crept towards the stacks back to the halls, the key clutched tight in one hand, while the other held a small electric torch. A thought of lighting up the whole room, schools, just as much anxiety as her fear of being heard. Though she jumped at every shadow along the way, she soon found herself standing before the laboratory door once again, her husband away in a meet- to a meeting, her servants sent home for the evening, and even though an autonomous, mostly disabled, for core maintenance did little to calm her nerves, she took her eyes to the door to study the key, peculiar thing, cynical call, and etched in strange patterns of wires a small red bulb on the back. Take a breath, she inserted it in the key, round keyhole, stepped back as some unseen mechanism, drew the key the rest of the way, and to the lock, and twisted a quarter turn with a buzz and a loud click, a red light of the rear of the light key lit. She did not understand the process entirely, but she knew the electricity would be directed for the key, disabling a number of locks and other security measures around the door. Soon there was another buzzer. The door began to swing open on its own. The door fully came fully open. The light of an electric torch revealed a piano sitting there against a the far wall of the laboratory, just as she expected. She sighed a sigh of relief. She stepped into the lab. Perhaps it would only be for a night she could play before she had to turn everything to their proper place and that her husband would not notice her disobedience. He had promised her one solitary night the balm for her soul. However, perhaps, triggered by the door mechanism, lights began coming on around the room, first eliminated were mere steps from her, and she shrieked as the light struck it. It was a body. The shock fell away somewhat for a moment, as she realised it was not a body, but a tonomanium, already a low, incredible life like one. There was something unsettling about the half-assembled device, not 
but before she could place it, another light came on, another, which, with each part of the room lit, another project was revealed, one even after another. He felt self saw half assembled of Eldermania appear from the dark. Eldermania was the ever increasing detail of complexity. He resumed walking through the lab, examining one and as each one as she did. As they progr- she progressed, they progressed. A unfeeling, settling feeling returned to her, becoming ignoring fear deep within her. She began to understand. As the Automania became more advanced, their features became more familiar, more and more. Each one was becoming a reflection of her own appearance. She saw the one at first, one stained by dry blood. Her hand flew to her mouth as she understood. These Automania were not abandoned in front of assembly, but disassembled. At some point, they began to be constructed with living skin, a cover veins that carried real blood, blood that now stained their ruined bodies and portray, destroyed clothing. There must have been dozens of them in the, that room, Every, even ever more gruesome in appearance. The assembly apparently became even more thorough to the point of increasing complexity. He felt she needed a wretch of vomit at sights, but nothing came. Why would he make so many duplicates of her? It had to be her husband's work. No one else could access this room. No one else is so skilled. Finally, with a click, a final light lit the corner of a room. The a piano, and despite herself, he turned to look. There, in a tall glass of cylinder, filled with some mysterious little fluid, floated what seemed to be the most complete of the copies. It was full face and hair, and full, totally unharmed. Unlike all the others, it was yet to be dressed. You suppose it was yet to be activated. A countless wires trailed down to the top of its head. Her eyes were open but motionless, glassy and dull. Her hand went to her mouth, but her, she shut her eyes and turned away. She could question this later. Perhaps, perhaps, she would ask her husband. He Was he forever preparing for an inevitable death? Had she mislaid led her? As to the severity of the condition, he wouldn't want to distress her, after all. He took, she took a few blind steps forward and bumped into something. Upon opening eyes, she discovered it was a piano. Thick layer of dust covered the entire surface. Peculiar, she certainly had been mere weeks since she last seen it in the drawing room. She shook her head and turned back, back to the gruesome room, focusing on the keys. If she could play, what? Well, just play... If she could just play one more time. Fingers touched the ivory and she began one of the simple pieces she knew. Have her even playing such a childish work, even playing more slowly than she had, even when learning the instrument, her fingers seemed to keep missing their marks. Motions were rough and jerky, almost like a, a brilliant flash came from behind. A fell once she fell to the ground, making a loud noise as she struck the piano briefly. She lay in her body unnaturally heavy, her limbs were so unresponsive. She heard heavy footsteps as her husband stepped around her prone form and placed a small device in the shape of a pistol on the work, work table and stood nearby. Next to her, he sat his own key to the lab. The light on the rear of it glowing red. Not even sparing her a glance, he cleared his throat, pressed a button on the table. She heard a loud click. Began, he began speaking. No, not to her. Beginning termination, log, subject. Dr. Bernard, Bernard Bert sighed. Damble thing, it been so long that I lost count. I thought I had it this time. He shook his head and continued. Serious number to be signed later. Note to self, recalled after over this part. Person note, inform the letter of that his authentic wave design affected with staining Zotron impendent devices. The enter wave cancelled out the literous wave form and induced catatonia instantly. She felt him slide his arms under her own, wrapping them around the tussle, and lift him and steady from the floor. A grunt and a muttered curse for depositing her roughly on the workplace table. She could see the little weapon her husband had lay, that had used lying beside her. The glass cylinder holding the most advanced copy stood in the centre of her version. Termination of current model is due to predicted failure points. Dr. Burnett said, resuming vulnerability to some hidden recording voice, affixing the point of remote 
put the mode on later to the Ocon call, the dull, erratic, emotional status of subdued automation produced severe power. Spikes and all aggravated its fervour. Agitated it further. Eventually led to catastrophic failure. Question of maintaining human independence. A drive is still instilling necessary instability. Obedience continues to elude me. Though this model outlasts its predecessor by a startling margin. He saw him placing various tools, none of which he could identify on a table long. The weapon... She stopped a moment to crouch next to her and shine a bright light into her eyes, which left her despairingly wanting to blink, though her body was still failed to respond. However, the doctor continued oblivious and carried her plight. The timing of his failure is away fortress. I have recently perfected a new design that will allow the automation much greater mobility, dexterity, and such. I will again disassemble the an inspection of joint wear shortly. Dr. Burnett stopped the place to light down, turning and stepping away from his cototonic wife to place a hand in the glass cylinder. I am closer to making you perfect again, darling. This time you'll be able to play your piano.